Welcome to the new site PPTK video tutorial on the Overlay 3D filter. The Overlay 3D filter is a compositing tool that allows you to combine different segments of footage using the alpha channel. In this tutorial, we will overlay animated 3D text with a background image. First we need to import our footage. Right click, add filter, input, image video import. Let's rename this filter background. Click file name and import your background image. In our case, it's a lake and some mountains. Now we need to import our animated 3D text using the multi-view image filter. Right click, add filter, input, multi-view image video import. Let's rename this filter text. We will use this filter to import a sequence of images that were previously rendered into eight different subfolders, each folder representing a single camera view. To clarify this, I'll click File Name and locate my animated footage. As you can see, my previous rendering from my 3D program has created eight separate folders, one for each view. To import the entire eight view sequence into the filter, all we have to do is go to View 1 and select the very first image. The rest of the image sequence, as well as the sequences for views 2 through 8, have all been loaded automatically. You can see that by maximizing the filter through double click and moving the view slider. Let's take a look at the file properties of our animated text filter. Width 640, height 384. Let's compare them with the file properties of our background filter by clicking the background filters name in the stack. This allows you to toggle between filters in your project view. File properties, width 800, height 600. What I'd like to do is get the dimensions of these two filters the same. In order to do that, I'll use the resize crop filter on the background filter. Click this button to get back into project view. Right click, add filter, image, resize crop. Drag from the green output section of the background filter to the input section of the resize crop filter to connect the two. And check vertical span. In the top, input a value of 60. This will take 60 pixels away from the top. And because we have checked vertical span, it will automatically take 60 pixels away from the bottom. Click Set to Destination, and let's resize the picture to a width of 640. Automatically, our height is now 384, and that matches exactly with the file dimensions of our text filter. Now I can create the Overlay 3D filter. Right-click, Add Filter, Composite, Overlay 3D. This filter has four input slots. The first slot is for the background. Let's connect the background filter to the overlay. Do this by dragging from the blue output section of the resize crop filter to the first slot in the overlay 3D filter. Now drag from the text filter and connect it to the second slot of the overlay 3D filter. This slot, as well as the other two underneath it, allow you to overlay additional footage above a background layer. Our multi-view text filter now pertains to layer 1. Double click the Overlay 3D filter to enlarge it. Go down to Combination Effect in the Layer 1 section. Choose Normal with Alpha. This takes the Alpha channel information from our animated text. If I zoom in, you can see a white border surrounds the text. This is Alpha Spill. This happens because the original background of our animated text is white. To fix this, I'll go to the Multi-View Text Filter in the stack click its name, go to Output Control, Alpha, Pre-Multiply. Now you can see that the white border is gone. Now I'm going to click the Overlay 3D name to activate the filter controls, zoom out a little bit, move the view slider. You can see when I move the view slider that the background image does not move at all. This means it has no depth information, and when viewed on a 3D screen, it would appear to be flat on the surface of the monitor. To push this image somewhat in screen, I'm going to go to the background layer and put a fixed point shift value of negative 10. 
Now when you've moved the view slider, you can see that the background image moves, meaning it has depth information. The text, in my opinion, is a bit too much in screen. To push the text a bit out screen, I'm going to go to layer 1 and add a fixed point shift value of positive 10. Now when I move the view slider, you can see that the background image is somewhat in screen and the text is somewhat out screen. Because the background image has been pushed in screen and has been essentially moved away from us, a small black area has formed on the left and the right side of the picture. This is because there's not enough color information to fill the screen anymore. To fix this, I'm going to make sure that the background radial button has been selected and go to scaling and input a value of 102%. Now when I move the view slider, I can see that the small black areas on both the left and the right side are no longer there. Now we need to add a pack 8 tile filter to pack the 8 streams from the overlay 3D filter into one. Right click, add filter, 3D, pack 8 tile. Click and drag from the output of the overlay 3D to the input of the pack 8 tile. Now you can see that we had 8 streams here and the pack 8 tile has packed those 8 streams into one. Now that we've done this, we can export the animation as an MPEG-2, which can be viewed on a 3D monitor using the new site media player. Right click, add filter, output, MPEG-2 export. Click and drag from pack 8 tile to MPEG-2 output to connect the two filters. File settings, video file, and specify a file name. I'll call this overlay. Now I'm going to maximize the overlay 3D filter again and move the timeline around a bit. Manipulating the timeline is usually something you want to do earlier on in the compositing process. But for this demonstration, we can get by with doing it now. As I move the timeline, I realize I'm not really all that happy with the location of my text. To change that, simply make sure that the layer 1 radial button, which corresponds to the text, has been pressed. And we can drag the text around in the viewport. To be more precise, we can go to Movement and to center the text at a value of 0 and I'll add a value here of 70. Now the text doesn't blend in so much with the blue sky in the background. To render the animation, I'm going to click NPEG2 output name and stack to access the filter controls. Go to settings, and I'm going to make sure that my rendering length is equal to the animation length of 351. 0 to 100 is the default setting for this filter. So I'm going to change my end time to 350, and now the length is 351. To render, click Render Animation, and render once again. And once it's been completed, we can view the animation in 3D on a 3D display using the new site media player. Thank you for watching this new site PPTK video tutorial on the overlay 3D filter.